Hey guys, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 7 um, and in this tutorial we're gonna just uh, put together some of the concepts that we've seen already um, and as well just we're gonna learn how to do a little bit more of work with uh, with Rhino commands, right? Uh, so we're gonna build a class uh, that will build lines between two curves um, so it's gonna be very simple, like a short script, but we will run into a few different problems, and this is we'll we'll start kind of clarifying a little bit how to write Python scripts in Rhino. Um, so let's start um, defining a class, right? Then we're gonna call just whatever, like my class. Um, you can give it your own name if you want to reuse this class later on, uh, and we're gonna define a constructor. So this class, um, sorry, we're gonna. You would be required to to input a few different information to to make this class work. So we're gonna say init and and then self, comma underscore str curve o one. So what I'm specifying as a as a first kind of input for this class would be a curve, right? I'm gonna require. I'm gonna. I'm using this variable name called str curve o one, um, and I'm gonna also name a second curve that is underscore str curve o two, right? Because I'm gonna require two curves to actually work with this class. So let's close that and column, and then we're gonna specify self dot str curve one equals underscore str curve one. So what is this line doing? This line is saying, hey, there would be a variable called str curve one inside the class that would get initialized with the variable with the with the information coming out from the input, right? So this name could be anything. You could say uh, S1, and you would have to put S1 here, right? What I try to do, like I do this stuff in, in, in other uh, programming languages as well, is just maintain a consistent kind of notation of when this this variable is being passed as an input, I just put this under underscore, right? You don't really need to put this underscore at all, it's just, you could put any name here. It's just the way for me to just remember, hey, this is the input that is coming from outside the class that is being provided and in this constructor you're kind of um, initializing this variable str curve one with this information so we're going to do the same thing for the second curve you can just copy all this stuff right and change it to two right so we have a constructor with two curves they need to be the identifiers of the object we will be working with and then we're gonna um, do a function, something like uh, uh, D -I -D -E -F. Um I'm gonna do a quite a long name here because I want it to be very descriptive of what we're gonna do. We're gonna say draw line between curves, right? So that's the name of my function. And I'm gonna specify self here so I can work with the variables that are in the class and now we're going to specify a few things to do um, so just to see that this is working I'm going to just uh, stop for a second here I'm going to um, uh, make something like print everything is ok so far right? So in this way, I will be able to call my class, uh, and we're gonna check if everything is working, right? So obj1, this is the name that we will give to the object, and uh, we're gonna say equals my class, and I need to give um, basically two string, like two identifier values for objects. Mm, if you guys remember how we did that. Uh, we did a variable, say strco1, whatever name you want, and we use a, a, a function from Rhino that is called 
get objects. Sorry, get object. Get objects with an S is another function that allows us to pick several objects simultaneously. So this function allows us to pick objects from the workspace, right? So we're going to put a, um, a little message here, say pick first curve, right? And we're going to specify the filter for, if you don't remember this method, you can just go and check it back with F1. And four will be the filter that would specify that we can only pick curves, right? So this variable will be the identifier of an object that is our first curve. We will copy this line with, say, I'm typing control C and I'm pasting control V. So I'm going to make str curve 02, CO2. This is kind of the shortcut that I gave. So pick second curve and also the filter would be 4. So now when I create my class, I need to specify these two identifiers for the objects, right? So these two string values. Uh, so I'm going to paste those two inside. So, so far it seems everything that it's okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to call the function that we created draw line between curves that for now is just printing this message but we will do a little bit more here right so let's see if this is working so let's see pick first line oh by the way I, I actually drew these two curves uh, on the workspace uh, I forgot to mention that you can just draw them yourself before running the script so if you do like draw two curves and just pick them first uh, pick the first curve and pick the second curve that's fine and then we get the message everything is okay so far so cool so we've got till this point we are calling this function and we have a class that it's uh, working with two curves that's fine so what I want to do next is uh, introduce you to some uh, of the methods that we can actually do with some curves right so I'm gonna just um, leave that line there and I'm gonna say pt list so this is the name of a um, of a variable that I'm gonna just build up myself so it says point list right or one and I'm gonna use the function from Rhino called divide divide curve right um, so when we are like when we start using a function, a new function like divide curve, again, I really recommend to just go to this uh, the help file, so we can say here divide curve, oh, that's open already, and when you go to the divide curve uh, command, it will tell you, okay, required parameters, the ID of the first curve, or like basically the curve that you will be dividing, the number of segments, this is the two required fields that you will have to specify, those two and the rest of the stuff is optional so it's saying this is optional this is optional so those two other parameters are optional uh, let's check what those are saying it's like boolean this third parameter is a boolean saying do you want to create those points if omitted or false points are not created and um, so we will put mm, true just to see those points and then the last one says return points optional as well uh, so if we say true this will return the function will give us back an array of 3D points. If we omit it or true, the points themselves will be returned. Right. Um, so let's see what we're gonna do here. We are gonna use divide curve. We are gonna give our first curve as the input of that self dot curve one, right? And then we're gonna say the number of divisions was 20 anything really and then we're going to specify true comma true why because we want to sp we want to uh, get the points back and we want to draw those points on the screen so we we'll, we want to see that visually that we are kind of making this division happen right um so let's see if this is working so far um, 
we have those curves over there. Okay, so let's run that. Pick first curve, pick second curve, and everything is okay so far, so no error. So if we go and see, you have to, in my case, I have to move a little bit the screen just to see that result. You'll see that the curve has been divided into, or there has been so many points created along the curve, right? That's pretty good. Uh, I just control set so to I, I ended the work of the script and I'm gonna copy this line again. I'm copying with control C and control V and I'm gonna change the name of the list to second list. So this time around I would just divide the second curve, right? So I'm getting two lists. In which in one case I'm building this kind of operation where I divide all the points and this function is returning the first list of points, like the, the points on one of the curves, and in the other case I'm going to do it in the other curve, right? So let's check that. Same thing. We go and check, oh, and there we go. We have the division of the curves in both curves working, right? So quite straightforward. Um, so maybe the most tricky part here is actually drawing the line between the points. What we have so far is two lists of points, and we need to be able to specify um, how to connect them. So what we're gonna do here is a loop. We're gonna use, we're gonna loop through the points of one list, or basically we're gonna loop through the number of points in one list, and we're gonna say, okay, connect this guy to the first guy of the other line. Connect the second one to the second one, and so forth, right? So how do we do that? We're gonna start. Um, we're gonna build a counter that we're gonna say it's a variable that will be just a counter. We're gonna say count equals zero, right? And next, we're gonna just say for i in pt list one, right? Um, we are like what this is saying is like there would be certain amount of elements in PD list or one, right? And I was gonna just go through all of them. In this case, because PD list or one contains points, not numbers, we are not able to use I as a reference to the um, um, to the object, but we will use count. That is our kind of own personal counter. So we're gonna say RS dot add line. We haven't seen this method, but this method takes two parameters, like one point and another point, and we'll connect those two. So let's see how to access the information from this list. And the next tutorial would be on lists, so like Dorian is scared from all this uh, stuff on lists, but you will see that most of the stuff, uh, most of the complex um, procedures that we'll be doing in, in Python would be handling the returning lists of functions, right? Um, so what, what I'm going to do is just open parentheses here and close parentheses, and I'm going to specify the f uh, these two values. The first one would be the first point of this list, right? And the first point will be the name of the list and the element zero of that, that uh, list, right? And in the second case, I'm gonna copy this. Comma would be the second, the, the element zero of the other list, right? The problem with this is that we will just go through only the first element. We need to be able to type inside here this zero instead of zero being the first element. Like you, we want to go through every element, right? So for that we're gonna use our count. So we're gonna type count here and count here. And the only missing bit here would be saying, well, count, every time we do this operation, count becomes uh, larger in one unit, right? So it, it, it increments in one end unit. So we are going through all of the points in one of the lines, and we are building a line between that point and the point of the other line. And uh, so the element zero of that list, and then the next one is the element one, the element two and the element three and so forth, right? So 
at this stage what we're doing is just connecting every point of one line with every point in other, on the other line right and at the same time we're printing everything is okay um, this is the whole definition of our class right let's clean a little bit here so it's a quite small class and we can reuse it for any number of curves any two curves so I'm gonna just uh, let's see if I have that okay okay so I'm gonna run it so I'm gonna pick first curve pick second curve and there we go so what do we have right now it's just that both curves got divided into the number like in this case 20 20 number of divisions uh, my window kind of went all over the place right number of divisions 20 and we connect them and we also created the points for that right i'm undoing that and and i want to make this class just to finish this in this tutorial we're going to make this class slightly more flexible so what if we want to just specify the number of divisions right so i'm going to add a new argument for the constructor so we're going to say comma underscore number of divisions Dips, right so we're gonna say something like self dot num of divisions equals underscore. I'm just gonna copy and paste it um, because it's easier, right? Um, so we're gonna create a third argument. So if we would try to run this class now nothing would change i mean we would have an error right we need to specify the number of divisions here so here now we're going to say like 60 right like much more um if we would run this again we would get exactly the same result we had before just because we we are still specifying quite um precisely that we want 20 divisions per line right we need to link these variables together so we're going to pick this self the number of divisions that is the global variable of the class that the, the class knows that it has this variable and we're going to plug it paste it in those values right so let's see right now we have those lines and now we're specifying to, we're calling this class with 60 divisions we could try it with any two number of curves and any number of divisions and we're going to see how if we click in the first and in the second one it works perfectly right i'm going to undo that uh, I'm gonna pick these curves uh, right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn control points on here so we can see these curves and I'm gonna move these points slightly like there right I can also move this guy maybe somewhere here just to make something slightly more interesting. So right, we have something kind of a little bit more crazy, right? So that's looking pretty good. Uh, and we're gonna just call this function